Good evening. You're watching the news on Croatian television. Croatia is set to introduce experimentally an overhauled curriculum and new teaching methodologies in 72 schools around the country this fall. Education and Science Minister Blazinka Divljak met today for the first time with the Prime Minister's new Special Advisor on Education Reform, Radovan Fuchs. The reform of the education system has been a hotly debated issue for years. The HDZ and Minister Divljak's People's Party have not always been on the same page. Asked who was really in charge, neither she nor Mr. Fuchs could give a clear answer. We're moving at the right pace to have all the materials ready to enter the classroom at the beginning of September. Some say we're moving too slowly, others say too quickly. I'm sure we're moving at just the right pace. The textbooks will be ready. There's a lot of interest from publishers. It's important to speed up the process. I'm going to make sure that all of the steps that are taken are in line with the national strategy, the action plan. I'm going to stick to what is in those documents. Tkon on the island of Pashman will be getting a new ferry port. The project is being financed with 4.3 million euros from the EU. Contracts have also been signed for an additional 1 million euros for three other ports in Zadar County. Transportation Minister Oleg Butkovic announced a major investment into ports along the entire coast. This is the first project of its kind in Croatia because it is under the Competitiveness and Cohesion Operative Program, which has been allocated 80 million euros specifically for these types of projects. It is the first one we've signed. Chief State Attorney Dinko Cvitan's term runs out next week. The government has yet to name his successor. The Social Democrats are urging the government to act swiftly. SDP MP Peja Grbin said he hopes they will not be swayed by politicians from the ruling coalition who are currently under investigation. I'll illustrate just how important this is through two examples. The State Attorney's Office is in charge of all criminal cases in the Republic of Croatia, but that is not its only job. The State Attorney's Office also builds cases and represents the Republic of Croatia in arbitration proceedings like the one against Croatia over Swiss franc denominated loans. EU foreign ministers have threatened new sanctions on Syria over alleged chemical attacks after the U.S., the U.K. and France launched missile strikes over the weekend targeting Syrian chemical weapons facilities. EU ministers called for more diplomacy today. Besides Syria, the ministers also spoke about enlargement in the Western Balkans. In the wake of the border dispute between Croatia and Slovenia, the EU has made it clear that all candidate countries must resolve their border disputes with neighbors before before they will be allowed in. Slovenia has told the European Commission it plans to sue Croatia over the border, and Croatia has until tomorrow to respond. Tomorrow we will send our response to the Commission, in which we will clearly explain that the ruling was the result of an arbitration process that was grossly compromised by the Slovenian negotiators, their judges and their agent. We believe it could not have resulted in a fair judgment, one that would bind Croatia to the final outcome. We have concluded that there is no violation of European law, since there is no change on the ground. The border is where it was. In 1991. The leader of Montenegro's ruling party, Milo Djukanovic, has won an outright victory in the presidential election, avoiding a runoff. Djukanovic, who has dominated Montenegrin politics for nearly 30 years, won 54 percent of the ballots, while his main opponent, Mladen Bojanic, had 33 percent, according to state election authorities. The government and public sector unions were supposed to begin talks on a new base salary back in January. But the first meeting between unions and the labor minister took place today. Unions say the state of health care, education and social welfare and culture sectors is alarming. Over the past decade, public sector salaries have increased by only around 200 kuna. This is a very hostile policy towards one's own nation. The consequences are obvious. Who is going to provide medical treatment for our citizens? Who is going to educate them, develop our economy? 
The island of Kirk is hosting a two-day event to kick off the outdoor recreational season. Hundreds of people turned out to enjoy the warm and sunny weather and get some exercise. Neither ability nor age are important. A love of the great outdoors is all that is required. This is day two of our Kirk in Motion event, which two local destinations, Malinska and Njivice, are organizing jointly. Two days, four activities. Hiking, biking, that was yesterday, and today we have a foot race and a guided recreational bike tour. It's really nice, we're from Rijeka, but we have a house here and we take every chance we get to spend time moving outside in the fresh air and nice weather. We're trekkers, we'll be running, that is walking a bit faster. She's going to? Yes, she is. In sports, PPD Zagreb failed to capture the SEHA handball title this season. Zagreb lost to defending champions Vardar in the final 26-24 last night in Skopje. In tennis, Borna Choric defeated Frenchman Julien Beneteau in the opening round of the ATP Masters in Monte Carlo. He's set for a major challenge in round two as he faces Novak Djokovic. Tomorrow's forecast calls for variable clouds and occasional rain. More frequent showers are expected in the mountain regions and the east. There could also be a few local thunder showers. Dalmatia will still get some longer sunny spells. The interior will see a moderate north-northeasterly wind. While on the coast, there will still be a moderate to high northeasterly in the north, reaching gale speeds in the Velebit area late in the day. Morning lows will range from 9 to 14 in the interior and from 12 to 18 on the coast. The day's highs will be between 17 and 23 degrees. Sunny and dry conditions are expected in the interior from midweek on. On Wednesday and Thursday, it will be quite windy with a moderate to high northeasterly. Temperatures will be unseasonably warm for mid-April. On the coast, it will be partly sunny on Wednesday and predominantly sunny on Thursday. Temperatures will be quite warm. There will be a moderate to high northeasterly, reaching gale speeds in places. Winds will fall and shift to a northwesterly on Friday. And that brings us to the end of the news. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow.